Hello everyone, Squared Circle Wrestling is back with another episode which includes Real Reason Behind MJF vs Hiroshi Tanahashi Match at the Forbidden Door WWE Hall of Famer blasts at MJF vs Adam Cole Match Sheamus calls out WWE for his booking Wrestling legend criticizes Adam Cole for his body Veteran slams Tony Khan for lacking vision Miro talks in ring return And much more You can check the complete list with time chapters in the description box below before we start, make sure to subscribe to our channel for all the latest news. Our top story for today looks at Real Reason Behind MJF vs Hiroshi Tanahashi Match at the Forbidden Door During this week's Dynamite, Hiroshi Tanahashi made a video appearance and challenged MJF to a championship match at this year's Forbidden Door event. According to Dave Meltzer in the latest Wrestling Observer Radio, Hiroshi Tanahashi is no longer considered an ace by NJPW, which is why he's facing MJF in a match he will probably lose. He said, politically, Tanahashi is now a guy. For years and years and years and years, Tanahashi, Okada, Naito and who was the fourth guy, maybe Ibushi or someone. It's like, you can't beat these guys. And then Tanahashi's no longer on that list, so he's a star who can lose, and that's why he wrestled Moxley on the last Forbidden Door show. Next up, WWE Hall of Famer blasts at MJF vs Adam Cole match. WWE Hall of Famer Bully Ray on Busted Open Radio, spoke about the problem he had with the MJF vs Adam Cole match at AEW Dynamite. He said, There are things that I saw last night that, unfortunately, commanded my attention as much as the great performance of Adam Cole and MJF. The bad, to me, was the use of blood from MJF. What did that blood really get us? The blood did not advance that story in the match, nor did it come into play later on. So it's a gratuitous use of blood that did not help the match take steps forward. Would the match have suffered if there was no blood from the mouth? Not at all. So I don't know why they felt they needed to use a superkick that led to MJF bleeding from the mouth. Next up, Sheamus calls out WWE for his booking. Former World Heavyweight Champion Sheamus, speaking to Alistair Majorge of Metro, explained that he is not satisfied with WWE over his current booking. The former four-time world champion believes that he belongs to the Money in the Bank card which takes place in London on July 1st. He said, I mean, selfishly I should. If it's with Ridge Holland too, that'd be great. But listen, last time we were in Wales for Clash at the Castle in September, I tore the bleeding roof off the place. Nobody came close. Roman, Drew didn't come close, and it was built around that match. Nobody came close to me and Gunther. Every time I'm in there, I blow the roof off the place. Doesn't matter if it's in Cardiff, Wales, doesn't matter if it's in Lexington, Kentucky, MSG, the reactions I get are insane. Every time I get out there, I put on a banger. I should be the first person they're thinking of, especially when a pay-per-view comes to Europe like that. So yeah, 100%, I should be in there. Next up, wrestling legend criticized Adam Cole for his body. Wrestling legend Conan, on his Keepin' It 100 podcast, mentions the changes that Adam needs to make to his body, while discussing if weight training should be mandatory in AEW. He said, Maybe the new generation doesn't give a F as far as the wrestlers, but I've always said it. If you have a tan and you look good, people see you in a different light. You don't want to look like the fans, and that seems to be a problem nowadays with a lot of wrestlers where they don't care how they dress or how they look. But you're more marketable when you look in shape. I think that Adam Cole probably thinks, hey this got me to the dance, why fix it if it ain't broke? But you're in the major leagues now, and if The Rock dressed like that or looked like that, you know. Stone Cold was a whole different thing. He looked like he was in shape. He looked like he could beat your ass. But you've got to look the part. Adam Cole. I like that guy as a person and as a performer, but he just needs a tan, and he needs a little bit more weight. I just think he'd be more marketable, cause he's got everything else, bro. The guy's got the looks, the people are with him with the boom and all that. He can wrestle. You know, he's got a good look. Everything. Bro just those two little things. Next up, Carlito signed with WWE. Carlito made a surprise appearance at Backlash 2023 and received a thunderous reaction from the crowd which surpassed all the expectations. Dave Meltzer, speaking on Wrestling Observer Radio, indicated that Carlito could well be back under WWE contract after the star cancelled his appearance on an independent show in July. He said, The only thing I know there is he had an independent show on July 15th for Devin Nicholson in Canada, and he called him up to cancel and said that he is signed with WWE. So perhaps he is signed with WWE. Wouldn't surprise me because he got that big pop in Puerto Rico. Next up, veteran slams Tony Khan for lacking vision. Wrestling veteran Eric Bischoff, during his recent interview with Ariel Helani, criticized AEW president Tony Khan for his handling of all elite wrestling. He said, Tony Khan just doesn't have the vision. Tony doesn't really understand the television business, he doesn't know how to produce. I don't know that he's capable of recognizing that, and allowing people that do know how to do it, because he's surrounded by people that do know how to do it. But Tony wants to be the booker of the year and be recognized as a creative guy, but he's not. Tony's a big fan of wrestling, but that doesn't make him a wrestling producer. Next up, Selena Vega comments on her career-changing move. 
LWO star Selena Vega is having the time of her life in the company as a babyface. During an appearance on The Bump, Selena spoke about being a part of the LWO and how she believes the faction is an opportunity for her to change her career. She said, The best things come when you're not expecting it. Once the LWO finally came together, cause it's something we've wanted to do for a long time. Now that it's actually here and I feel the WWE universe is so strong behind me. And mind you, they've only seen one side of me for a long time. So I love that they've embraced me so much. Now it's just this is the moment. This is the moment that I feel like could really change my career. Honestly, I remember Liv talking about that, saying there was someone that texted her saying that she was an inspiration to the rest of the locker room. One of those texts came from me. Next up, Saria opens up about the conversation she had with Triple H after her WWE exit. AEW star Saria, on the interview with Wild On, opens up about the conversation she had with Triple H about why she left the company. She said, I was really happy and then me and WWE parted ways. And then I get a call from Hunter Triple H being like, what happened? Did you want to leave or did they ask you to leave? And I was like, that's surprising that you don't know about this. But no, Vince didn't want to renew my contract. Next up, Miro talks in ring return. AEW star Miro will make his in-ring return on June 17th on the debut episode of AEW Collision. The former TNT champion Miro has not wrestled for AEW since All Out 2022. He expressed how eager he is to get back in the ring while being interviewed by Good Karma Wrestling. Very excited to be back in a pro wrestling ring. I've been aching for a long time. The Redeemer's been in the desert looking for answers. Maybe finding them, maybe not. We'll have to find out this Saturday but I'm very excited to be around the wrestling community and just the fans. I've never been to the United Center, never wrestled there and people in Chicago are unbelievable so, I'm really looking forward to it. He commented on his time away from wrestling and said it sucked. It sucks, it sucks being away from the ring. Just like I said, looking for answers and not getting any, it's not a good place. And not just me but just overall as a human being when you have no answers to all these questions. It just eats you inside and I had quite a long time to eat myself and even though I'm still 260 pounds, I ate quite a bit. But I'm aching, I'm aching to come back and to find out what's going on, what's happening. It's been a while. Next up, top AEW star shows support towards CM Punk return. Former AEW Women's Champion Jamie Hayter, speaking in an interview with Metro, spoke about working with Punk, praising him saying that anyone in the business should want to work with him. From my experience with him, he was always very very pleasant, very helpful, and I always had really great conversations with him about wrestling. He's a wealth of knowledge because he's been in the business for so long, and he's got extensive experience. You'd kind of be a fool not to want to pick his brain and not want to work with the guy. He knows what he's doing. Continuing, Hater made it clear that she believes Punk is an asset to the company. He was one of the most gripping performers in professional wrestling. The summer of Punk, all of that. Everyone was so into it and there was a reason why he was the most popular wrestler. To be honest, I would say he's still incredibly popular now, regardless of the all-out stuff and the drama. He's still a big name and he's still wanted in the business. You know what? It's not my company. I can't speak for everybody, but I wouldn't have an issue with it. If it's gonna be good for the company, then I'm all for it. If it's gonna put butts in seats, if it's gonna get people to watch, then absolutely. Next up, Brian Danielson talks growth of AEW. AEW megastar Brian Danielson, in a recent press conference, spoke about growth of AEW as a wrestling company and says he is proud about how well AEW All In is doing. He said, I'm really proud of the work that we're doing here and proud of the work we've been able to do. I never thought I'd do another hour-long match again in my life and I've done two of them. And I'm very proud of both of them. I'm proud of the work that we do here. I'm proud of the wrestling that we do here. I'm proud of a lot of the talent, especially the younger talent. When you feel like you start getting old, you see these people who come up to you and say, I watched you when I was a kid. It's like, oh no. But then, to see them grow, in just a little over the year and a half I've been here. It's so rewarding. I've loved the experience. Also, I've never been at a place where the company has so much heart for the wrestlers, and that is so meaningful and makes me feel so grateful for this place. It's great to have a second option, a competitor, to the company that kind of had a monopoly on TV wrestling for the last however long. But to do it with such grace. To be so successful so quick. How many tickets have we sold at Wembley at this point? It's unbelievable. It makes me feel proud just to even be here. And that is all for today's news. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel Squared Circle Wrestling for all the latest updates.